Yeah, day four of competition at this Hockey Women's World Cup. And time for the second game for the hosts. It's the USA versus England in a key Pool B clash. The USA was the victim of the first overturning of the world rankings at this World Cup, beaten 3-1 by Ireland on day one. The USA are bottom of the pool and could do with getting something tonight. Otherwise, they'll be looking with real interest at Ireland's game with India on day five. England enjoyed plenty of possession against India on day one, especially in the second half, but they couldn't turn it into enough goals to come away with three points. Both teams have been wounded in the first game and both have been waiting till this day to put right game one. They'll be thankful to be playing at this time of the evening. It's one of, being one of the hottest days of the year here in London and it's a perfect weather and conditions now for a game of hockey. And as they make their way out, there'll be a special presentation, a special moment for Alex Danton, who tonight becomes only the third player to reach 200 England caps. She has 103 Great Britain caps as well, so it's playing 203 caps tonight. Kate Richardson-Walsh, 226, Jane Smith, 202, and now Alex Danson with 200 England caps, a real milestone for the England captain. A worthy round of applause for a real servant to England and Great Britain hockey. Now it's time for the national anthems of both countries. A fantastic moment for Alex Danson in front of 10,500 people here at the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre as she leads her team down the American line. The fifth meeting between these two, two countries at the World Cup. The previous four have been tight affairs with few goals in regulation time. In team news, Jackie Briggs starts in goal for the USA. In the back line, Young, Frody, Van Sickle and Manley. In the middle of the park, there's Gonzalez, the Vatiz sisters and Woods. And up front, it's Funk and Sharkey. The replacements for the USA. Paulino, who scored in their first game, starts on the bench for England. It's Hinch in goal. A back line of five, Unsworth, Thoman, Ansley, Turn, Webb and Ballston. A two-player midfield, Townsend and Owsley. While up front, Danson will be looking for a goal to equal or two to pass Marjorie Pollard's 81-year-old England scoring record, which stands at 115 goals. Danson 
with 114 goals. Marjorie Pollard scored her 115 in 41 caps for England. She was a goal machine in the early 20s and early 30s. It's a different game these days. Take nothing away from Danson. 61 goals in 200 England appearances, 53 goals in 103 Great Britain appearances. She really is a phenomenal leader and a phenomenal player. And Jackie Briggs will have her work cut out today. Maddie Hinch will also expect to be busy. The countdown is on. The USA against England in Pool B about to get underway. And it is the United States of America in the all blue strip attacking the goal away to our left hand side. England in the all red. And alongside me in the commentary box for this one is Mel Clulo and Mel. England almost taking America's game to America. The high press and quick pressure. Yeah, fantastic. Really quick out the blocks by England, which is what you'd hope to see in this situation. For me, I'm really interested in the midfield battle. Townsend, Owsley and Martin up against Batiz and, and Gonzalez. Well, we were talking about Pern Webb being in the middle of the back line, and she's there, well, with Ansley alongside her. And there is the typical American game, full of pace, full of aggression, full of grit, high up the park, looking to turn possession over in dangerous areas. Yeah, and it's certainly Holly Pern Webb's probably preferred position, and for me, I think that's where she has the biggest influence and impact is in that central role. But at times she does push through and become one of the screen players in front of that back three, depending on who's actually on the field. Danny Kerry, not on the stand as she as he always is. Pushing on. Wait, come back. And there's just here, come one of our umpires, Lonnie Del Forge of Belgium. Thank you, that's fine. She's at the left-hand end. In England are defending currently, and the end England are attacking is being blown by Annelise Rostron from South Africa with pressure. Leads to a sideline ball that was uh, that funk. With that pressure, sideline ball taken by Fatiz. Tara Fatiz, number 23, the younger of the two, the former USA under 21 captain, held that post at the Junior World Cup in Santiago, Chile, back at the end of. 2016. I think it's certainly a rebuilding phase for the USA at the moment. They've got some household names, as have previously been mentioned, but there's a new crop of players coming through from their collegiate system. The yeah, only six of the squad remain from their excellent performance about four years ago in the Hague, and eight from the Champions Trophy squad that finished third here in 2016. So it is a big rebuilding phase. But there's been a shift, hasn't there, within the American system. They're centrally located now in Pennsylvania and Lancaster, and, and they're all paid to live and train there. Yeah, I think it's the only way that um, the USA are going to remain competitive on an international scene. There isn't a, a club system over there due to the sheer size of the country. I think some of the players may look to play abroad if they can, in the, certainly in the next 12 months. But, you know, it's hard to travel backwards and forwards the whole time. Yannicka Shopman appointed last year, was assistant to Craig Parnham, the Englishman who was in charge for three years of the United States. Uh, Shopman, Olympic champion 2008, World Cup champion 2006, European champion 2005, Champions Trophy champion 04, 05 and 07. Yeah, I, was, I think I was on the end of a fair few hidings from her and the Dutch team around that time. Well, you, you appear in the uh, top list of uh, England caps. Uh, 179, just well, equal with Karen Brown. There you go, fifth equal, oh, fourth equal. There you go, look at that. Royalty in the commentary box. <laughs> I think I had a few more tournaments come along than Karen did. But yeah, there's a few out there that will surpass me, I'm sure. Well, forward and well taken in by Sharkey, who plays it back out. Brody, put up by Townsend. Here is Toman, who had an excellent game against India. And she's under pressure, calmly does it. I think 
Uh, Toman's probably, as one of the younger players in the squad, I think she's settled the best out of, uh, sort of the four or five that we've got here at this tournament. The winning back number 38 today is Danson Pills back inside, looking to the top of the circle. Dre gets a little fortunate, but then the Americans uh, win possession back through Young. Here is Funk. And the last time she played here, she was uh, Jill uh, Whitmer. And uh, subsequently has got married. And the ball inside and the tees. Round the back they come, being allowed possession round the back by England now, who've just dropped off to a half court press, having started with a full court. I think they'll certainly come in and out of those presses as, as the evening comes on, but I think from an American perspective, first objective achieved which is ten and a half thousand people have become well, ten thousand will give them 500 fans themselves they've quietened them down you never thought ten and a half thousand people could be so quiet and Webb under pressure immediately from Matson. quickly taken to Danson he has Bray in front of her also uh, Haycroft Raya, Owsley, Toman, turn Webb, and ball forward straight to Manley, the tease, down the line to Sharkey, Sharkey has the tease, it's the ball she wants, the two swap positions, Sharkey on the reverse stick, it's underneath that dangerous ball, free hit to England. There are the crowd. There's a player, Mel. You just want noise throughout, don't you? I would imagine. I don't know. You tell me. No, I, th I think you do. I think, um, you know, when I played in the Commonwealth Games in Manchester, we were we were really fortunate. Somebody bought, was allowed to bring a trumpet in. And when there were times like this, when it was quiet, they would just play songs and it would really just get that crowd going. And, you know, you can hear it now. There's some clapping. Someone started a cheer and it really does make a huge difference to, to the players on the pitch. Yeah, you want to make it, well, I use the word hostile, but you want to make it as uncomfortable for the opponents uh, of the home team as possible, don't you? I think it, just, it also helps the players. I think you, you know, if you hear a drum beat, you can play to the drum beat. If you hear the music going, you, you get caught up in, the, you don't get caught up in the way that they're playing, but it just raises you because you realise how many people are here, what, what they're here for, and you want to play for them. Well, the USA didn't boss possession against Ireland, but they did have more shots, more circle entries, more penalty corners, so they had good foundations on which to build. And here they've had more possession, but I would argue not too much of it in the danger area. And England been dropping off a line and time round the back. Yeah, I think it was, you know, Asia McF McFerrin in goal was the player of the match, and that spoke volumes to the fact that the scoreline was 3-1 to Ireland. England, on the other hand, have the lion's share of the stats against India, except the one that really matters, of course, the scoreline. Second half, when India were protecting their lead, England were very dominant, 58% possession, 19 circle entries, of, uh, 19 circle entries to one of India's, translating to nine shots to one, but nine penalty corners, none converted. And that is a concern, surely. Of course it's a concern I think they're they're five from their last 54 but you know I think what stuck out for me is Alex Danson came and spoke to us after the game and you know she she rightly and I think on reflection England did actually play quite well in that game it's just small things small little tweaks and I think when you come to a major tournament if that's all you're dealing with then you can cope with that well, that's the point in close games you want it you need to be scoring penalty corners and even if it's one from nine and this is a lovely barnstorming run down the middle by Ray that's brought to an end by Frodi, but in close games you need things like that to fire and, and five and 54 is, is not a good conversion rate and four of those have been hits from the top of the circle all four of those at the Commonwealth Games and the one the other night was from a second phase of penalty course and there's no variations that have worked in those 54 
think that in itself, you know, builds pressure on those players who are trying to execute the skill. Heavy turn from Martin. Is it out to that left hand side lane? Can't quite keep it in play. Yeah. The United States down that right hand side. Punk bringing it out of her own half. Toman again. Two come. Toman just goes past Paulino. You have to be cool in that situation, but then it's given away by Lane. And here comes the Tease, the older of the, the Tease sisters. Looking for a penalty corner, wanting a foot, getting it. And the first short corner of this contest goes the way of the United States of America. I think Michelle Batiz was actually claiming an obstruction here initially. And then, fair play to her. It actually wasn't it for the foot of Anna Martin. Michelle Batiz is certainly fired up tonight, you can't blame her. They scored a fantastic goal the other e evening from a variation. Slipped over to the right-hand side and Michelle Batiz played it down to the, to the far side for Paulino to score. Well, Paulino is actually the backup for this one, standing on the 23. Goes to the left-hand castle, slap comes in from Batiz, there's the deflection and it would have been very close to a goal had it been a clean deflection. It should still be there, good save, it's still bouncing around and England survive. I'm not sure how, but Hinch makes a couple of superb saves. The original slap from Michelle Vertiz, and the deflection was actually too thick a deflection. It actually stopped the ball rather than helping it on its way to the net. Hinsworth comes across to put a stick on the ball there, trying to dribble it out of defence. England win the free hit, and we'll get a chance to have a look at this again now, but very close for the United States here. I think it's going to be a, a USA strength into variations. It's Erin Matson that plays the ball in, and that's where it goes. Perhaps it could have been slightly more in front of her than it was, but it bounces around all over the place. Sophie Bray there, going to the knees as the post player and clearing it. Bray trying to receive the return ball from Hannah Martin. And a chance here, perhaps, for Ansley up into the body of Funk, and a free hit to England. Giselle had to make that, Ansley had to make that there. Jill Funk is one of the quickest players on the field tonight, and she got the ball past Ansley then. Yeah, whether the ball came up off Ansley onto Jill Funk, possibly a USA free hit, but there's no complaints, just fair play getting on with the game. Lane has to turn, and as a result can't make the trap. Just get a feeling the team that does the basics the best in this one will come out on top. Yeah, I think that not to go on too much about the first game between Germany and Argentina, but the skill level there was, was fantastic. And as a result, we got five goals and the team that had the best skills won. Nice work, brilliant stuff from Owsley. Now dancing down this right-hand flank, standing in front of her, his feet. Danson comes inside, Fee still going as Danson slips it back to Owsley. Cross comes Gonzalez. How about that for a take from Stephanie Fee? Control the tease. Gonzalez. Tease. And nicely played by the United States as they try and work their way out of trouble. And they've done very well. got to decide whether they're pressing or not though at the moment they've got two forwards who've gone high and the midfield is slowly getting up England perhaps a little bit slow to also set up from that sideline the foot Winston wants the ball back here it comes and Kerry on the headset down to the bench and David Ralph will be uh, Parting instructions. That's good pressure. And got the sideline ball. It didn't come anywhere near an American stick. I think Pern Webb was uh, 
asking for a stick obstruction or something, but there's no touch. Oh, oh whistled across and can't, can't bring it under control. But what I like in the two situations where we've commented and felt that perhaps it should be an American ball, America just get the USA just getting on with the game. They're seeing what the the call is, whether they like it or not, is irrelevant. Perhaps they've learned from the Irish goal the other evening. Danson, with, uh, young at her back, and gives away the free hit. Danson takes space on this right-hand side through lane. Owsley in acres of space wants the ball now, gets it. Owsley cuts inside and. Uh, doesn't get anything, it's a 16. Tease with the defensive work. Tease. Yeah. Hoffman. Tara Vatiz wins the free hit and takes it quickly. Very tall player, Tara Vatiz, the number 23 on the far side. Gonzalez, the skipper, lovely ball to Michelle Vatiz. Kern Webb gets half a stick on it, falls to Lane. And there is the quarter time hooter, and nothing to split these two in the first period. The busier of the two keepers, Manny Hinch makes a couple of saves to keep her goal intact. The 10,500 need to find their voice a bit more, you feel, for England, but the USA will be delighted. Nil all at the end of the first quarter. So your thoughts, Mel, on that uh, opening 15 minutes? The USA will be absolutely delighted, you feel. Yeah, I think they, they started the game well. I think um, tactically, Yannicka Scotland's probably got it spot on. This was their best opportunity with the ball from Michelle Vitiz down to uh, Matson as the injector. And then it's just, you know, scramble defence. Sophie Bray there on her knees and then clears it off. Seen those given as, penalty, as uh, another penalty corner in certain situations for deliberately being off the baseline. But again, you've got to question whether that's a missed opportunity. Can't fault, certainly can't fault Magadan there, down on her knees, trying to see the ball through the crowd of players. OK, I think we can get some reaction, can we? Let's go down onto the pitch. I'm here with Danny Kerry, just to sort of talk about the high press expected from the US and the fact our forwards having to come quite deep to get the ball. How are we going to counteract that now? Good of Danny Carey to give us his time in the first quarter break. So just minus a ball, and then we can get this uh, second quarter underway. Here it is, and the whistle blows in the United States. Get us underway again. Vitiz up the line to Sharkey, Toman. A little look up. Sharkey gets her stick on the ball. And Toman, well, they're leaving it to each other, and Sharkey's going to take full advantage. Toman gets back to get a stick in. Better communication required from England in defence. Gonzalez. Sharkey. Good work from Sharkey. And Harsley wants the foot, but it's uh, play on. Oh, in fact, they've got it. Hunsworth forward to Haycroft and oh, that ball could have gone I know it's easier from the commentary box but that ball could have gone the first time she looked rather than two more touches good work from Danson 
Still going, the England counts it, twisting, turning, but unable to get the better of the American defender, who's Caitlin Van Sickle. Caitlin Danson's picking the ball up as well. The, the USA are working exceptionally hard to put two defenders on her. They know that she's got good uh, stick skills, individual skills, likes to get the ball up in the air. Ansley. Lovely ball. That's the left-hand side. Fired in. And the ball's done. That's a second chance. Into the circle it goes in cool, calm, uh, defensive work by Young. Young pulled into action again. Secondary line of defence makes the tackle. Gray takes it quickly. Again, more good defending on the edge of the circle by the USA. Here is Gonzalez. Still going. Hemsworth. That stick on ball. And these two met at the Hague in 2014. The USA were lean 2-0 at half time. Went on to win the game 2-1. Good get from Townsend. And uh, Del Porge just called it for obstruction, was it? I think, yeah. I didn't know. From this angle, it doesn't look like it, but Lorene Del Forge is exactly down the line of that. Felt that Danson and Townsend obstructed. And the ripples of a Mexican wave starting in that far corner by the big video screen. And Again, silence descends on the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. I think England just needs to try and zip the ball around a little bit quicker, particularly when they're transferring it from one side to the next. At the moment, players are just trying to have that extra touch, get the ball ready. Well, leading down the line is Hunter. Good work from Joe Hunter. The ball forward looking for Danson, but cut out by Frody. And to try to win possession back. Frody onto the stick of Danson into Bray. Now, this is a chance as they try and to get into the circle with Bray with a dangerous ball into the body of uh, Manley. And then win possession back again. Owsley. It's a dangerous looking ball. And they get away with that, do England. Martin. Pass is coming on for uh, Watton. Turn Webb. Up the line, Rea leaves it for Danson. Danson. Up against Young once again. And he's going to have a busy night, as is Danson by the looks of things. For T's advantage being played to England on the reverse stick. Cross it comes. And uh, Martin, here is Unsworth, going the penalty corner and getting it. That's fantastic build-up down the right-hand side. Toman and Danson, Toman with the ball in. Ellie Watson does really well to get in front and cause some havoc. Anna Martin goes for it. And you can, I'm sure there's nothing worse than a group of players running at you with a video sign. You know you've made a mistake. Laura Unsworth knew straight away that she made the sign. And Annalise Rostrum, Julie obliges. So, Ansley. On the right of screen, on the back line. Unsworth to the right hand castle. It goes to Unsworth. Looking for the deflection. Pops over the stick of Raya. And wide of the goal. Comes across the far castle, looking to go back across. I think Ellie, I think Ellie Ray does get a touch on it. She does. Just not enough to put it on goal. Against India, they they, they peppered the, the keeper's head side, that side of the goal, quite a lot. I remember Simon Mason co-coming that one, was wondering whether or not they should go the foot side of the keeper. It's just some butts. If it goes in, you don't ask the question, do you? 
And again, it's, though, it, it, it's a small difference, isn't it? Ellie Ray is there. She wasn't under any pressure. She got something on the ball, but unfortunately, the delivery just wasn't flat enough for her to get a, a sound connection. Raya, dancing. Inside Young, dancing, trying to find Martin. Does it get to Bray? No, but it does find its way through to Watton. Stick. Ashley Hoffman making that tackle on uh, Ellie Watton. Perhaps this is the momentum that England actually require. Very few circle penetrations in the game, just five. Not sure about that. We'll take that as gospel then. Raya. Dancing. Back to Perm Webb. Toman. Dancing wants it down that corner again. Lovely little touch and dancing if she can keep it in. Yes, she can. Dancing goes 3D. Shot comes in from Watton. And dangerous, says Annalise Rostrum. And Dancing's going for a foul, is she? She's got away with that one. She blatantly went to Annalise Rostrum, gave the video referral sign, then consulted with the team and then decided it was a bad call. Raya. And towards Dancing, up off the stick of Young. No, up off the stick of Dancing. I mean, you'd expect it from a player of 300 caps. Alex Dancing is... Chance here, Martin, swing and a miss. Oh, she robbed the ball of Ashley Hoffman. The opportunity was there, but she just snatches at it. It's a fantastic steal by Hannah Martin. She could have kept going, couldn't she, a little bit longer. Fantastic on the ball, individual skills, quick hands, but... 100% going to be disappointed, unfortunately, with the air shot. Woods. And out of space, Toman. Owsley, yeah, good tackle, solid tackle. And unfortunately for Fee, she loses her stick. Now she plays it forward to Dancing, Dancing with a little spin. We saw that against India. What a tackle that was from Van Sickle. But Dancing, she showed that spin against India on this touchline, and she shows it again in a much more dangerous position on the edge of the circle. For the United States are trying to break through Woods. It's just too far in front of her. Owsley helps or watches it go over the sideline. But Danson's lead running has been ex exceptional. If, if anyone wants to see a, an absolutely fantastic example of lead running, she is doing that because, I, and I keep harking on about it, she's not making huge long leads over 10 yards, 20 yards, short, sharp movements, but she's the only forward at the moment that's actually doing that. That's lovely work by Townsend. Still going, Townsend. Got her foot. Backstick as well, apparently. Shielding. No oh, shielding, is it? Lane. He goes pounds in again. That time it's out of play. Done by Petty. And uh, an opportunity here. Haycroft into Bray. Here is Owsley. Now she's got space. And just squirts away off the stick. The spaces are certainly down the outsides and round the, the, the USA team, but for England to, to make it count, they've got to move the ball on quicker than they are at the moment. Kind of five minutes remaining in the first half. No goals. Ansley battling, Bray battling. Bray still going. Sophie Bray, she has Owsley with uh, or for company. He gives away the free hit.
Unsworth. Turn Webb. Here comes Maxson. That's a good ball forward. Hunter. Hunter. Support that right hand side as she wants, but it's straight down the middle, and that should be easy pickings for the United States, and it is. We saw against India, England had their better chances when they went down the flanks and along the goal line. But they've also created their best opportunities down this right hand side as well. Anna Tome and Alex Danson, they've all created the chances around here, and certainly as, we're, as England are getting sort of 30, 40 yards out from goal, they're trying to go too direct. Unsworth into Haycroft. Haycroft looking for the support, the support is going with Townsend, Haycroft into the circle, onto the third penalty corner. Better from England. It was better. Ball into Sarah Haycroft, I thought Susanna Townsend could have perhaps done a little bit more on that left-hand side to give Sarah Haycroft the option. But she spun back in, just got the ball over the line. The line is in the D. On to a USA foot for England's second penalty corner of the game. It was young. His foot was in the way. So, and again, it's Giselle Ansley, number 18, to the right of those two castles. Unsworth on the left of those two castles. They'll swap round as we come to this number one camera position. And it goes to Unsworth once more. Unsworth with the slap. Good number one running from. Magadan and the ball comes in off the post and on the far post it was Hunter who couldn't quite bring the ball under control she's got possession now but England hitting the frame of the goal Hunter wins the free hit England within a whisker they're taking the lead they've still got some pressure to apply 3.25 for the half-time break and Webb a snap into the circle, easy picking for Hoffman. OK, let's have another look at that opportunity. That's the ball to Laura Unsworth. Great running initially by Magadan. Unsworth with that and Townsend with an overhead smash that we've probably seen at Wimbledon recently. Have a look at this. That is hand-eye coordination at its very best. Briggs totally beaten. Fantastic by Townsend, just unlucky not to put the ball in the back of the net. Now, Matson plays it forward. Here is Sharkey, nice work from Sharkey. Gets her head up, tries to, and successfully goes around Perm Webb. Just outside. Free hit is taken. Can they find the killer ball into the circle? Lifted into the leg of Pern Webb. Initial ball in, doesn't have enough pace on it. Ansley gets it out. Here is Pern Webb. Watson, Townsend. Nice work from England. Now, that's a good pass to Townsend. Hunter, who delivered the pass. And then brought down, taken quickly by Hannah Martin. Martin. He's back with Baldwin, turn web. Up off the stick. Oh, tell me what, Townsend almost gets uh, Matson in the face with her stick. She's lucky there, Matson. Yeah, potential. Potentially looked worse than it was, I have to say, but it was a good passage of play from England down that left-hand side because it was simple. They got it, they gave it, they moved the ball on, but to do that, you've got to give the ball carrier options. Lovely skill from Martin, but an even better tackle. Coming in from Funk, he's back in. Sideline ball, feet. Magdalene wins a free hit. Got to be careful not to push the ball away there, England. Feet into 
Yeah, that's a lovely turn by the USA number one. Then it just runs away from her and she can't find the pass. Townsend finds Ansley. Gray. Nice little ball on to Owsley. Owsley. Water. Townsend. Townsend does well just to lift it over the first. It's still going Townsend. And then it's cleared by uh, the USA. And oh, Van Sickle. And there is the half time Hooter. England growing in stature for the latter half of the second quarter. They've hit the frame of the goal through Susanna Townsend. But the United States will be very happy with the way the first half has gone. Nothing to split them. USA nil, England nil. OK, let's get on to the pitch. Krista, who have you got? I've got Laura Unsworth here with me. We've sustained a lot of pressure from the US team. Is it sustainable for us to continue like this? We're attacking down the right. Are we going to get an outcome? I think so. I think if you look at the first half, we've had quite a lot of chances. And actually, we've, even though they may have squeezed us, they haven't actually created that much. So we're going to keep sticking to our game plan and hopefully a goal will come. We've had corners, we've put them away. Um, but I think at half time, we're, we're good going in. Thanks, Anzi. Good luck. I certainly am, Chris. I'm with the American coach. A lot of pressure you've sustained on the, on the Brits, on the, on the England team. Is it going to be more of the same in the second half? Do you think that's going to get your result? I hope so. I mean, that's our game plan, and we want to put pressure on England and seeing if we can cause some turnovers in, in the process. I think they're playing well, too. It's kind of a physical battle, so we'll see where it ends up. A great atmosphere for these girls to enjoy, too. Yeah, definitely. It's a great game to play. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What a wonderful sunset over London this evening. As we um, back, there's the studio. And there's the crowd, Anna Martin, waiting to get this second half underway. And it, uh, a chess game of the first half. Very little space, very little opportunity for both sides. Will it be a moment of magic that... Uh, sees uh, one team take the lead or will it be an error let's hope it's a bit of magic England then get this second half underway attacking the goal to our left hand side immediately the aerial brought down and played away by the states here's the tease the music continues to pump out and a little bit more noise around the arena the state's stacking the goal away to our right hand side, the southern end of the ground. And then attacking the northern end. And around they go. Here is Young. Brady fires it forward and Pern Webb cuts it out into Martin. Has a little look around. Owsley's to her left as she wants. She spins and looks to the right hand side. Danson's there. Danson is fouled. Danson winds up. But it comes. And Townsend unable to get the deflection goal back. Almost wanted roll reversal in that situation, but good build up play. Hannah Martin spinning it out to Alex Danson. Crash ball in. Just couldn't get the touch on him on the ball from Susanna Townsend. Lansley almost intercepts and runs clear, but has to come back to collect the ball. Toman. Townsend. Danson. Townsend. Townsend tries to find her through the legs. It takes a deflection off the defender, who is manly. Toman. Hansley. Balls into her left. Here is Borsden. On the left channel is Owsley. Owsley. Can't see a chance against Woods, and there's a double team as Gonzalez comes in to close. And Owsley is forced back towards the halfway line and back into England territory. Pulls them. Nice pass out to Hannah Martin, who has space and a time to get her head up to pick the pass. Finds Townsend on the right. Danson. Lovely first touch to bring it away from the defender who is young. Danson still going, pulls it back. Martin! Oh, well, a penalty corner off Van Sickle. I thought Van Sickle had made the tackle, and I think they are indeed going to refer it. 
I think Van Sickle makes the tackle in real time. No, well, they made the sign, and now they're not. So I think Lorene Del Forge is saying it wasn't anything that Van Sickle did. There was a, there was an infringement, I think, by Tara Vitiz somewhere else in the circle. So really good communication, actually, from Del Forge to the USA captain. So Ansley, as you can see, in Unsworth, as it has been throughout. Ansley, who takes the penalty corners for her club side. So it's a little swap now. She's gone to the right-hand castle and the left-hand castle shifted as well. Again, they go to the foot side. They get the deflection off Sophie Bray, but into the pads of Jackie Briggs. Well, they're doing everything but, aren't they, England? I think it shows when it's not going your way, it's not going your way. Penalty corner, you want them to get it on target. If the keeper makes the save, the keeper makes the save. You can't you can't legislate for a keeper making a save. That's what they're there to do. Exactly, and we and comments have come in that we want that um, England were always sort of plugging the, the goalkeeper's head side. That time they went the other side. Unfortunately ended up with the same result, but at least they're showing a variation and a and a different side to their corner routines. Is that going to run out? Yes, it will. Finch will just usher it out. Ball comes on for Unsworth. Let's have another look now. So there was a, a switch and a shuffle at the top from Laura Unsworth to open up that angle. Much shorter um, injection from Townsend due to the distance they had to carry. And Sophie Bray, right position, unfortunately, just couldn't get the angle on the stick to lift it over. Jackie Briggs in goal. Danson. Lovely skill from Danson. And then it's a well, she's still going dancing, and dancing and into the circle, dancing onto her favour, reversed it and scores! And dancing on her 200th England cap equals the England and GB scoring record of 115 goals that has stood for 81 years. A magnificent piece of individual skill by the England captain. She led from the front against India. She didn't get the result on that time, but this time, against the United States of America, she gets her goal. It's the little bit of skill at the top here where I think she tried to play the pass. USA just got a stick on it, but absolute tenacity from Alex Danson, putting it onto one of the most lethal backhands in international hockey. Look at the determination on her face. Ball so far behind her, she has to end up flat on the floor, and look what it means to the crowd and to the coach. Oh, we get a celebration from him as well. So Alex Danson, the England captain, breaks the deadlock on 34 minutes. And she is now level with Marjorie Pollard's England goal scoring record of 115. And she now has 62 goals in her 200 England appearances. Back to turn web, good tackle from Matson. Tease. Raya's back there. Raya is nope, it's a free hit for the earlier infringement, which is inside the US half. takes England to the top of Pool B, but Ireland and India, of course, still have to play. That comes tomorrow. So now, the USA will try and find a way back into this one. From an England perspective, they'll be wanting the cushion of a second goal. But that's just the start they wanted to this second half, England. Yeah, of course, um, you want to you want to score as soon as you can. And you know, I think at the moment we haven't seen much from from the US, um, USA from an attacking perspective. I think a lot of their attacks have never really made it into the circle, as the statistics showed. And 
I think they have to come out and play. We've just seen the, the pool table and it, it's pretty grim reaping for the US at the moment. So they've got to come out and play and try and force a goal into the England net, which hopefully will then leave some spaces for the likes of Lily Owsley, Susanna Townsend, Ellie Raya to really use their pace and exploit um, this inexperienced USA backline. Young. Lifted it into Watton. He just gets on with it. Raya wants it played in front of her. Watton cuts back. Now Owsley. Watton drops it to Ansley. Turn Webb. Ansley. Toman. He didn't want the ball there. But got it anyway. Ansley. Balls and drops out. Ansley to Raya. Toman had done well there. She'd led in field. That created the pass to Raya. Unfortunately, from an England perspective, Raya couldn't keep it in. Gonzalez wins the free hit. Bunt. Raya. Toman tracking it. She drops it out. Oh, deflected ball. Well, here's an opportunity, perhaps. Lovely slip ball. Lovely individual skill. And Matson couldn't quite find the shot, but that was a lovely interchange of passes at the top of the England circle. And Owsley, wonderful skill down this left-hand side as we see a replay of this interchange for the United States in the bottom right-hand corner, but this is Bray on the reverse stick. Owsley led the other way. Gonzalez, good work through Petty. She's got space to her left with Matson. If she wants, here is Matson. Couldn't get a shot away. Lelania, oh my word, she gets a shot away there. Erin Matson with an absolute howitzer levels the score. She couldn't get a shot away earlier. And well, Manny Hinch simply beaten for pace, but take your hat off to Erin Matson. What a shot. Melissa Gonzalez makes it because I was calling for the ball to go a lot sooner than it did, but she drew Holly uh, Webburn over. Hinch has got to be disappointed being beaten on her near post, but take nothing away from Erin Matson. That's an absolute thunderbolt of a shot. She's put it on target and she's beaten the world's best goalkeeper at the moment to make the score 1 1. Yeah, it went at an absolute pace over Hinch's stick hand and England's lead. Last but five minutes. USA one, England one. Ernie, the USA with an almost instant response, perfect response. And sending it back as you were. Nice work from Magadan. Still going Magadan onto the foot of Raya. Raya just simply can't be five if she's standing on the line and the three hits taken in meter inside the dotted line. I think she can stand there, but she shouldn't engage until it's moved, the ball's moved to five. Petty. Nice pass from Petty Hunter. And Ray just beaten to it by Hoffman. Hoffman. And now the crowd get behind the team. Hoffman. Magden. Yeah, again gives the way the free hit. It's outside the 23. Brody. Brody's direct ball, Unsworth, one touch and then clears to Martin. 
He drops it to Danson. First one as England's free hit, Pern Webb stands over the ball. Ansley Lane. Back to Ansley, who's going to be under pressure here, and she's made a right mess of it, and Gonzalez plays it into uh, uh, Funk. Funk with Unsworth. Again, the press reaps rewards, but Townsend steps in to win possession back for England, and now can the home side counter-attack. Danson and Townsend exchanging passes. Danson twisting, turning, drops it to Perm Webb. Martin's to her left if she wants it. Here is Martin. Martin trying to go around Magda. Martin, can she get the shot away? Play on, says uh, Delforge, umpire Delforge. Magda's done a really good job of keeping Martin's back to the USA goal. It's fantastic double team in between Paulino and Magadan there. Hannah Mark Martin does have quick hands. She's in that situation, obviously going to be looking to put the ball on the foot because of where the ball is in the circle. Gonzalez trying to play it forward for Paulino. Just over three minutes of call of three remaining. We've had some goals in this third quarter. We still don't have the leader. USA 1, England 1, England taking the lead for Alex Danson. Owsley goes to turf and we're going to have ourselves. The card, Van Sickle picks up a card. She picked up a yellow in game one and she's picked up a green card in game two. So England have an extra player. Two minutes, and the two minutes starts as soon as the player sits down on the chair. It's not when the whistle is blown or the card is brandished, it's when the player sits down. That's obviously to encourage the player to get off the park as quickly as possible. Lovely ball, Bray. She's got nobody up in support with her, so she's going to have to wait. Turns it round the corner, Townsend against Gonzalez. Townsend wins. That little partic that particular foot race. Turn Webb. Owsley, Toman in making tracks down the right hand side. Here is Anna Toman. Up off the stick, but not dangerous. Up off the tees. And then off dancing for 16. Second Bray did exceptionally well just to hold the play up. Sometimes I think defensively, yes, you're keen to get the ball moving as quickly as you can, which Giselle Ansley did, did well. But then England are picking the ball up 10 yards inside their own half. Nobody then getting ahead, so to keep that possession is exactly what you'd want. And I think Sophie Bray used her experience really well, and then great little bit of interchange. And the Martin Shank, another individual skill. Can't remember the loose pass, trying to find Townsend on this left hand side. Succeeds in turning possession over. Bray with some physical defensive work against Woods. Unsworth, Ballston, Ansley, Toman. Hanson doesn't get the whistle. I think she felt her stick was impeded, but Umpire Del Forge didn't agree. Unsworth, final 30 seconds, Housley trying to get first time into the circle, Watton is on the far post. No rush from the USA to take this sideline ball. Throws the aerial ball. Pern Webb is under control. There's the whistle and the 
Huta for three-quarter time. Alex Danson gave England the lead in the 34th minute on her 200th cap, scoring her 115th goal, which equals the record of Marjorie Pollard, which has stood for 81 years. The lead lasted five minutes. Matson equalising for the United States. End of the third quarter, USA 1, England 1. So as the teams have their chat, let's have a look at some of the action. And how about this? Here's the goal, Mel. Uh, it's just individual brilliance from Danson. Gets perhaps a little bit fortunate there that it wasn't a decent tackle, but who cares? It's what you want to see from your striker. Driving into the circle edge, did look for the pass, drove the space and then puts the ball back across Briggs. You can see that she's still moving to her right as Alex Danson puts it into that bottom corner and by putting it flat on the floor, look, you've got Lily Owsley in there, Ellie Rare in there, all looking for that touch if required and look what it means to those guys. And now straight back in to the cap role of captain. And how about the United States equaliser? Came five minutes later, but some shot. Yeah, Melissa Gonzalez does really well, goes round Susie Petty, draws Holly Webb Pern in, rolls the ball to Matson and I mean, that's an absolute crackerjack of a finish. And if it wasn't against England, we'd probably be, you know, clapping her and celebrating it. Rolls it onto that backhand and just unleashes an absolute bullet. Pretty sure that Maddie Hinch will be disappointed in the goal, but take nothing away from the USA and, and that absolutely fantastic shot. Six and a half thousand fans in that West Stand, and they're enjoying a bit of Neil Diamond. So are the. Uh, the volunteers, let's get on to the park. Krista, who have you got? I'm here with David Ralph. David, what's going to give us the edge to break this deadlock? I think we're, the big thing is we just need a little bit more quality in the final side of the pitch. Uh, you can saw that with the goal from Alex. When we uh, have a bit more quality in the ball and team the ball a little bit longer up there, we get a bit more fresh and more great opportunities from there. Thanks, David. Let's hope we see it. Thanks. Well, here comes a quick break, perhaps, for the United States. And it's Matson once again, who could be... Uh, Getting a shot on target, but England do well. It was Pern Webb who stopped the USA number one, and then Unsworth mopped up. Townsend. Dancing now on this left-hand side. She's played the first three quarters down the right. Now she's swapped to the left. Ball's done. Ansley. And Danson now jogging into a central position. And now she has to jog all the way back. The ball goes out of play, and that's an, she's finding a lot of space, the USA number one, and she's using it very well. Certainly looks, um, she's showing her potential now, but she certainly looks one to keep an eye on for the future. She used to be a fast pitcher and a left-hand hitter. That might explain, in softball, that might explain why she was so good on the reverse stick. Sorry, I, was just, I just think in England's, from England's perspective, I, I don't know if they're struggling with the screen players a little bit. Laura Runsworth and, and Holly Webb Pern are playing in those positions at the moment. Now, whether there's a nervousness because there's a few young, younger players or inexperienced players in that back line, I feel sometimes transfer balls just not quite on use, utilising those players, whether they've got one eye on the back or the score line or whatever. I don't know, it's just not doesn't seem to be working. Townsend's gonna have to be sharp here because Magadin's coming in. He is just that. Not from Manley to uh, Frody. This is young. Winds it up. And he goes all the way through. Tonin's lost it. She's done so much right in this tournament so far. A rare error from her. An opportunity on the reverse tip from Vatiz, who wins the free hit. I think nothing is the call. Bray, now they've got numbers here. They can play it smart here, England. Owsley with a head up. 
has uh, Acroft and Young running the ball away and USA now have everyone back behind the ball. I think on that particular break, um, Owsley could have done a little bit more, but she's playing back in the midfield in this tournament. We're used to seeing her playing up front. And certainly is going to add a different dimension to her game, but could have done perhaps a little bit more on the ball, maybe come in field or use her pace and go around the outside before then looking to capitalise on three or four England players that have got up in the attack with her. Thrown into space and Ansley has to show her speed against Sharkey. And the back stick. Sharkey play forward for Bray, lovely turn, who sells Frody. Bray, she has Danson to her left, has she just overrun it? Here's Danson, good save from Briggs. Fast lightning break from England. And it draws a good save. It does. Briggs very quick off her line. I think Sophie Bray possibly, possibly could have done a little bit more with that pass to Danson, but fantastic um, spin on the halfway line that left Ali Frody behind. Possibly could have given it to Danson a little bit earlier, but the opportunity um, arose. She's got striker's instinct, the defenders sagged off, so she took it into the circle. Owsley into the circle, forward play forward, looking for a foot that just made its way through into the USA stick, and the stick of uh, Moyet. Let's have a look at this spin again. I mean, as a defender, if you're going to commit there, you've really got to make it, and I think Ali Frody knew she'd made the wrong decision. The, actually defended well by the US, they kept their uh, compact three, they waited for Sophie Bray's head to go down, and then stepped out, put her under pressure, and then she was forced to lift the ball over. I think it was Julia Young that, that stepped out, and it therefore forced um, Sophie Bray to have to lift the ball to Danton. So free hit for the United States of America. It's with uh, Manley. The tease, head up, tries to drop it inside, looking for a foot or a leg, nothing coming. Raya, still going Raya, up over halfway, throws it again, tries to chase it down, then the jab, but uh, Manley does well. So a reminder of how Paul D stands, Ireland will be on top if it stays as one all. Their game against India tomorrow. Incredible, isn't it? If it stands as it is, an Ireland win tomorrow, they qualify for the quarter or for the next round. Don't know where. Depends if they finish top third. No, they will qualify in first place if they win, because England only have two points. I think you might have got a lot of money on that. It's Put that on back down in the bookies at the start of play. Long way to go though. Here's the tease. Trying to repeat the, uh, <laughs> the reverse stick. Shot, but this time was a cross. I just wonder, as a coaching or team, when do you, when are you, are you ever happy with a point? But is there going to be somebody that actually comes out with eight minutes to go and says, we're going to go and we're going to win this game. This is how we're doing it. You see Yannicka Schottman there with the board out. Do you throw caution to the wind and go for the three points? We'll find out. Bray. Well, they're parting for it. Bray all the way forward, takes a deflection off Fee. Looking for Watton, long corner, but the USA just dropping off Sophie Bray. You do that at your peril. Tell you what, give her a third opportunity and she's going to smack it. She's going to smack that ball golds, I think. Oh, Hansley. Honestly, out of play. 
Oh, fantastic yeah, sunset. Watson can't bring it under control. Manley. Townsend picks up possession. Driving, looking for Bray. But uh, Frody with some excellent defence. Housley with a, a good foot, if there is a good foot, to stop the United States spreading it out to the left-hand side. Hoffman. This is certainly more like the United States that we were expecting in game one. I'm not sure turning up 40 minutes before the match really helped. Uh, I didn't use it as an excuse, but it's not ideal preparation. It is an ideal preparation. I think the good thing was at least it, it, it was a warm evening. Where he's going to go. And as we said, it wasn't the case that they didn't create chances and they didn't have the corners. So, the United States with the advantage now for the next two minutes. Toman with a, a key uh, tackle, but it's still with the United States. Mel, you've got to come up with a player of the match. Thought you'd enjoy that one. So, you need to get your thinking cap on. Be generous, I'll give you three minutes and uh, 35 seconds. goes down, ooze from the crowd. Hoffman spreads it to the left-hand side, forward from Fee. Toman gets half a stick on it. Here is Van Sickle. Good work. And defence again by England. Van Webb. Toman. Ball's done. He's going to try and chase to keep that in, but too far in front for the England captain. So England, England are defensively staying really compact and protecting the middle of the pitch that you'd expect them to do with four and a half minutes left to play. Well, and down, player. Good work from Toman. Sideline ball, Gonzalez will take. Well, no, it's not, it's uh, England ball. Kathleen Sharkey definitely got the last touch on the, on the ball. I don't think she needed to take it because I think it would have gone off for a USA sideline. That's a long corner. Brody wanted the ball for a 16. Now, the crowd realise the opportunity. And they make themselves heard, trying to lift England to one last push. In it comes. Good first line of defence by Fee. 90 seconds till your player of the match, Mel. You're all hot, Charlie, you really are. Bray's back on the park, it's 11 versus 11. 3.20 remain in the contest. Is there to be a winner? Or are England going to register their second draw of the tournament? Bray still going, lovely work from Bray, has Martin in front of her, she wants. There's so many blue sticks around her. There's no real surprise that the United States win it back. Turn Webb. I think it was for challenge perhaps beforehand, but either way, it's the USA. This is just where it becomes a little bit fraught and a little bit frantic. Two and a half minutes left on the clock, and I feel there's one more opportunity coming for either team. Or maybe even for both sides, you never know. Unsworth, really dogged work, and now perhaps a chance for Owsley to run. She's only got Bray in front of her. Lovely skill from Owsley onto the foot 
of the tees. Quickly taken from Pern Wang. Unsworth, a little fortunate she's got Toman outside it, who will bring it under control. Unsworth pulling it back, looking for the foot, not there. Falls to uh, uh, Townsend, who does kick it, and it's USA free out. And now, look at that. On two minutes, there's a break in play, and I can ask you who the player of the match is. Very quickly, three contenders. I think Erin Matson has been excellent for the USA in this second half. I think Melissa Gonzalez has led the troops exceptionally well. But for me, not just because it's her 200th game for England, I think Alex Danson has been excellent from start to finish. She was England's best player in the first half. She scored a fantastic goal to equal a record. So she is my player of the match. Congratulations to Alex Danson, the second player of the match. But, uh... She has played excellently in both games, so can't stop complaining with that. But certainly the United States have had some very uh, excellent performances. And here goes Gonzalez once again. Gonzalez into the centre. Is this the chance for the United States? Onto the foot of uh, Ballston. And it is a penalty corner with 72 seconds remaining. Magadan here with the shot, Hannah Martin does well to close down and unfortunately for Ballsden she's up in the air, you can't, no way she could plant her feet off that deflection and USA's second penalty corner of the game and we did highlight this as a strength of theirs. Let's hope that Maddie Hinch and her defence can stay firm with 1 minute 12 left on the clock. So the top of the circle, Hoffman to the uh, right. Is it to be a move off the top? It goes to Hoffman, Hoffman slips it, shot comes in, deflection, and Hinch with the save. Away to a right-hand side, they're going to refer, they've got another penalty corner. So Michelle Batiste seems to be the key deliverer and the ball goes into Jill Funk and I think it's Laura Runsworth there that manages to get herself in the way before Hinch clears the ball. So again, Hoffman to the right, Batiste to the left. Inside the final minute, there's a miss injection and relief around the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. A chance perhaps for England to break. Martin has Townsend and Danson in front of her. Martin cuts and fills. Still going, Martin plays it in brilliant defensive work from Vitiz, who's just been down the other end as the main in, uh, striker or drag flicker. But here's a chance now perhaps for the United States. It's their turn to have a go. Final 30 seconds. And uh, free hit is won by Magadan in the centre of the park. And here is Gonzalez. Gonzalez driving. Gonzalez pulls up off an England stick. Free hit to the United States. Final 10 seconds. Back it comes to Hoffman. Hoffman fires it in. And a diving Magden can't get on the end of it. And that will be that. And there is a second consecutive draw for England. Real disappointment for Alex Stanson on her 200th cap for England that she can't get the victory. She did get on the score sheet to equal the scoring record of Marjorie Pollard of 115 goals that stood for 81 years. But in the end, England just come up short against a determined United States of America team who equalised to Erin Matson. A wonderful reverse stick finish. Two excellent reverse stick finishes in this contest, but they cannot be split. Final score here in this Pool B clash. The USA won, England won. So what does that mean for the Pool B table? And it means that Ireland against India, should Ireland win, they will win Pool B and qualify directly into the quarterfinals. England's last game is against Ireland. India need the points as well. It's so uh, finely balanced. The remaining fixtures, uh, India, Ireland uh, tomorrow, then on Sunday, India, USA, and England will know exactly what they've got to do. They play the final pool match against Ireland, seven o'clock local time, Sunday evening. So those are the final matches in pool B, but tomorrow, we turn our attention to these two games, Spain against South Africa and India against Ireland. 
OK, let's get some post-match reaction now and hand over to Krista. And I'm down here with Holly Pernweb. Paul, not the, not the result we wanted, but we showed a lot of resolve with a lot of attack from America. Just talk us through what it felt like out there with this amazing crowd. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't think we can ever underestimate the effect that the crowd has. We're so, so lucky. Um, this crowd has been amazing once again tonight, um, and we really, really appreciate it. So thank you very much. <laughs> And on the pitch, you know, we, when we got that goal that Alex scored, you know, we really thought we were in it. Um, and then there was that breakaway, and unfortunately, we, we succumbed to it. How are we going to, you know, build on this and look forward? Um, I think there's a lot of positives to take out of the game, um, but then equally a lot of things that we need to work on. So we take what we can from this game, we take our positives. Obviously, it's amazing that Al managed to get that goal um, on a 200 cap, which is very special. Um, we can always rely on Al. Um, but yeah, next game we just want to build on it. We want to get better every game and now all our focus is on Ireland. Perfect, Holly. Best of luck for the rest of the tournament. Thanks.